The overarching theme behind all of my work is, you know, celebrating the nuances of being a woman and just the lived experience of being a woman. Being in art school, going to different galleries and museums, and seeing how women were depicted in these places, even though they're valid expressions of the female form and of womanhood, they were expressions that I couldn't relate to. It was tough for me to envision myself in a place like that. So I started to make work that I could see myself in and that I could relate to. My name is Amber Vittoria, and this is my journey to Web3. When I was a kid, I was definitely a very creative child. The earliest memory I could have of me drawing was I was probably like four or five years old. I was coloring in a coloring book, like feverishly. I feel like there's a gif of a, like a five-year-old that does that. That was me. And I remember my dad coming over and he's like, oh, like you can color inside the lines. I think I was drawing like on a bunny or something. And he's like, see, you could color the tail purple or the ears pink. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. And it just went right back to like scribbling in the, in the coloring book. So I feel like that's a great encapsulation of who I am as an artist, even 30 years later. So I was born in Patterson, New York, grew up there my whole life, went to college in Boston, graduated in 2012. So a friend of mine from college, Jessica, worked at an agency called VaynerMedia. She was like, I think you'd really like it here. It's not like other agencies in New York City. So I started working there and I really loved it. But in that time period, I kind of knew more sturdily that I wanted to be an illustrator and work for myself. And then eventually a fine artist if uh, the universe allowed. So I I pivoted and that allowed me the time back to do more freelance, put my work out there on social media. Vayner taught me everything I knew about how to use social media, especially at that period of time. And then about a year ago, I was introduced to the world of NFTs, which was kind of a life-changing moment because now I'm able to fully make the work that I want to make and be able to put it out there and support myself. So it's really cool to see kind of my childhood dream come true faster than I thought that it would, and uh, that's definitely credit to Web3. So February 2021, my husband came up to me and was like, hey, there are these things called crypto punks, and I think we should get one. And he showed them to me like, oh my God, they're so cute. Like, let's get a bunch of them. <laughs> No, um, I wish we could afford a bunch of them in hindsight. So the summer of 2021 is when I really started to put my work out there and sell it. And uh, thankfully it really resonated with the folks in the Web3 community. And uh, here we are, which is cool. So my first collection was my inaugural collection. It was really just exploring my different forms, pulling from my painted pieces, making them digital and exploring what you know, the female form was in an abstract way. Then I experimented with doing letter forms because letters and poetry are a very big part of the work that I make. So putting that into a collection was really interesting. And then from there, I started to make different groupings of works that thematically tied up to either one poem or one overarching theme. So now I sell a lot of my paintings as additions. I have a printmaking background as well, so being able to kind of tap into the history of printmaking and then translating that into NFTs with additioned paintings has been, been pretty cool. This piece, I want to do a really big painting of, it's gonna be like a foot and a half by um, two feet, and I've got some sketches of what it's gonna look like, and I'm doing this inspired by a poem that I wrote probably two or three weeks ago, and I've been kind of struggling to come up with a visual for it, um, which kind of makes sense for the poem. So the poem is, the mountains we move in our mind to help us make sense of the answers we still cannot find. So the idea behind it is just kind of speaks to and is inspired by the anxiety that I have. I have generalized anxiety disorder. And sometimes I really mull over all these different problems that my mind creates for itself. So that's what this piece is inspired by. So today I'm gonna to be doing a little study before I paint on the bigger wooden piece and I'm really excited for it. My process kind of varies depending on the piece. Sometimes I'll write a poem and then I'll have to think up a piece and sketch it out and play with it and make sure that the piece relates to the poem. Sometimes I'll paint a piece and then a poem will kind of come out of that. So I try to be very thoughtful and intentional when I'm making work, even if that 
process switches from piece to piece. In college, um, one of my painting professors, Dana Frankfort, we would draw like a still life and be like of coats or something and she'd just come over. She'd let us know ahead of time so it wasn't a surprise and she would just like wipe the charcoal off of our drawing. And the idea was to teach you to not be so precious about the work that you make because there's no permanence, you know, it'll eventually be gone one day and you'll eventually make more work. And that I think is the biggest lesson I've taken from college is to not be precious with my work, is that you're a human being, you wanna see an element of that humanity within your work and to be overly precious about that work you pull out, you're actually kind of taking that away from the piece itself, so. So this one I feel like at a first go is really nice. I really like the negative shapes, how these two are separate negative shapes. This one up here that's bending and then this really nice one. But on this one I like how I'm a little bit more confident with the lines now. So I'm gonna do one more, I might do it a little smaller, really get those lines down and then I'll, I'll feel good for tomorrow. So the piece that I'm making really taps into how I overthink a lot of things. And I know that that's, I'm not alone in that. Um, so I wanted to make a piece that visually speaks to that idea. And it's just kind of like how you either think or overthink sometimes, or like when you're trying to formulate a thought or you're overthinking a thought, how the different ideas or possible outcomes kind of shift and balance in your mind. That's kind of what each of the shapes represents. Like, one might be an obvious outcome, and then another might be a softer outcome that you're unsure about. So just trying to balance all the outcomes that haven't happened yet. Long term, where do you see yourself and where do you see your art going? Uh, long term, I would really love to see my work auctioned off at an auction house or in a gallery or museum. I feel that traditionally commercial artists tend to kind of be pushed out of um, fine art in terms of the value of how people view it. Um, but given that there have been so many commercial artists that turn fine artists like Cause and Andy Warhol, I'm hoping that I could kind of follow in a similar trajectory and have my work be fully viewed as fine art.